So our scriptures invite us to go a little bit deeper than titles, but I'm going to give you three titles. So first is the title priest, second is the title Pharisee, and then third is the title Christian. So first, priest. If you think about what a priest is supposed to do, a priest basically is supposed to lead others to right worship of the Lord. And so one of the things in our church's tradition is a posture called ad orientum, that's to the east. And so that's sometimes what you are referring to when you say the priest celebrated mass with his back to the people. It's not so much that his back is to the people, it, it is that his face is towards the east or towards the Lord, and he's supposed to be leading the people in worshiping towards the Lord. It's all people and priest facing the same direction. Now, whether that's your preference or not isn't really important. It's just important to understand the role of the priest. A priest, even in Old Testament times, was supposed to lead the people in right worship. And the title priest is really something that we all share. All of us at our baptism were baptized into the priesthood of Jesus Christ. Now, it doesn't mean you get to wear a collar, sorry. But it does mean that you have a priestly role by your baptism. It means that all of us are called to lead others in worship of the Lord, right worship. And the challenge is understanding our role. Now, when I was named uh, rector of the cathedral, uh, the bishop asked me to use the title that goes with rector, and that's very reverend. And of course, the first time I used it, my brother Mike saw it, and he said, very reverend? More like somewhat reverend. That's why we have families. They help us to stay humble. And humility only comes by being humiliated. That's the only path. So if we really do want to be humble, we have to be willing to be a little foolish, to be humble. And our first reading today is very humbling because it's really God speaking to all of his priests. And unfortunately, that includes us. He's talking to all of us because the priests he's addressing in the first reading have failed in their essential duty, their essential duty of leading others to worship. And of course, the only way we can lead others to worship is if we ourselves are worshiping rightly. And to worship rightly first begins with the heart. It's a heart that's open to the Lord, that comes before God, recognizing that we indeed stand before God as beggars. We are in need of God's mercy. And so the first thing we do at the beginning of Mass is what's called the act of contrition, or the rite of penance. That saying together, the I confess to you, my brothers and sisters, and to Almighty God, that I've sinned. I come here as a sinner. And as a sinner, I can worship God because I worship the God of mercy. I worship the God of forgiveness. I worship the God of unconditional love. And if my life reflects that worship, then others might see in my life that worship of God, and they might be drawn to it. That's priestly ministry. Now, the other challenge is to be a Pharisee. You know, Jesus beats up on the Pharisees quite a lot in the scriptures, and he beats up on them for a particular reason. He calls them hypocrites. Well, the Greek word for hypocrite is actually an actor. That's what a hypocrite is, someone who pretends. Now, speaking of actors, I've been listening to Matthew McConaughey's book, Greenlight. Now, disclaimer, it's rough, it's a little bit vulgar in places, and it is not for children. But he does have some fascinating reflections. And one of his reflections was that the man I want to be and the man that I am go to sleep with each other every night in the same bed. That both are present at the same time. The person I want to be and the person I am right now exist in me. And that's not being a hypocrite. It's recognizing the distance between where God is calling me to be and where I am right now. And so if we want to be authentic, recognizing that distance is perfectly acceptable. Pretending is not. And all of us have a little Pharisee in us, the Pharisee that would like everyone to see the pretty image of me, the Pharisee that would like everyone 
to see me as this perfect person who is already arrived. But that's not really true. That's not really who we are. And so we gather together as those imperfect people desiring to be holy. And that's what leads us to the word Christian. What is a Christian? Well, a Christian is someone who models their life after Jesus Christ in such a way that people identify them with the person of Jesus Christ. That's why in the New Testament you hear that those followers of Jesus were first called Christians because people observed how they love one another. That's how Christians were identified in the beginning, that people saw that they interacted with each other differently than the rest of the community. They loved each other so much that they cared for the poor. They looked after widows and orphans. They gave generously to others. Those Christians are people who care for each other. And of course, unfortunately, in our day and age, Christians are tearing each other to pieces. Unfortunately, we've allowed the polarization in our society to infiltrate our church. And it's not consistent with who we are. Yes, there are conservatives and there are liberals, but there are not demons and angels. When we demonize other people, when we start to see our fellow Christians as our enemy, we have failed in the most basic identity of a Christian. And so the challenge of St. Paul in the second reading is really to see our love for one another as a form of our love for Jesus Christ. It's not that we all agree. We will never all agree. St. Paul and St. Peter did not agree, but they showed love for one another. And it's in that love that we have unity. And so our scriptures this weekend invite us to really look at those titles, to look at our priestly ministry. How is my worship of God possibly inviting others to worship God? How is the imperfection of my life leading me to authenticity rather than hypocrisy? And how is my love demonstrating my love for Christ?